All right, so it turns out that you do have to use position destroy for this thing to work out. Trying to destroy something that you've just changed with collision point ends up not working. So position destroy at that x and y. Now keep in mind it'll destroy everything in every layer there, so watch out for that. So if you have something in the background, that's an issue. All right, so we have these x and y positions, but my y is currently set at exactly 416. I would actually like to vary that so that I can actually go up uh, and do every column. So I'm actually going to do yet another for loop around this whole thing, which is going to set up my y. So out here I'm going to say my y equals 416 to start with. My y is greater than or equal to 0, I guess, because I want to go all the way up. My y is going to subtract 32 each time. And then there's going to be a brace that starts up here at the top and goes all the way to the bottom. I'm going to pull out the my y that I had here before, because I'm creating it in the for loop now. Something I like to do is every time I'm inside of a brace, I like to tab things over. In this particular console, you use control i to do that. And by the way, if you want to go back, like you've hit control i too many times, control shift i does a back tab. So this way I can tell, just by looking how far indented it is, whether uh, lines of code are inside of for loops, if statements, that kind of stuff. All right, so my y starts at 416, which is the bottom of my screen. I'm going to keep going 32 up, and I'm going to keep going until it's, while it's greater than or equal to 0, because I don't want to check for negative blocks. That would be silly. All right, if I do destroy a line, I need to, I'm going to move everything down, which happens in this particular line here. So this thing here says move all above blocks down one line. Now the trick is that what happens if you have two in a row that are both complete? I would skip one if I left it this way. So one thing I have to do is I have to add 32 onto this so it rechecks that line. Because it's possible if you've gotten one of those Tetrises where you actually have a line and it completes four in a row, you actually want to make sure you delete each one in turn. So what this is doing is it's going to run all of this code here multiple times. And in fact, it's every time I run through for each column in my thing, I want to do that. So let's see. This is the slow way to do it, but oh well. Do to do. Convenient how I'm getting nothing but lines. Blam. All right, good. All right, so that allows me to actually go through my entire grid and do that. So the next part is, what about you know keeping track of score and keeping track of speed? Anytime that I destroy a line, which is right here inside of this if statement, I need to keep track of that. So for example, here, I would update my score. Here is also where I would update my speed of my blocks. So for a quick example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the speed that my timer is happening in my controller, and I'm going to change that. So anytime that I complete a line, I'll update the speed of my game. So that was in controller when it's first created. Right now I'm just setting this to 30. I'm going to create a global game speed here and set that to 30. And because I like to, I'm going to make that a capital S. 
So anywhere that I'm using a timer, I'm going to change global dot, I'm going to put global game speed in there. So when, for example, when alarm zero goes off, I'm going to set that to global game speed. So by default, when it starts off, it will be 30. So it's every second it'll move down. All right, if I complete a line, I might want to update this. So I'm just going to subtract off 15 for now. One thing you got to watch out for, if you ever set an alarm to zero or less, it never fires again. So I'm going to make sure that global.game speed equals the larger max of one and global.game speed. That little check makes sure that it'll take the larger of these two. So if for whatever reason game speed becomes zero or negative, I'm not going to run into that issue. All right, so there's that, that. All right, so that's faster, not twice as fast. And that's much faster. All right. It may be that you want some sort of counter that keeps track of how many times you've completed this. So this may be too simplistic for your game. You might need to uh, have some sort of counter that says, once you complete 32 lines, then you do this. So maybe you add to your counter here. And outside of this, check for that. You could do something where you do modulus. Modulus is the remainder after you do a division. And basically say every time you complete 30 lines, add, uh, subtract 5 off the speed or subtract 1 off the speed, however you want to do it. Just make sure you have some way of updating the speed. All right, I think that has most of the things you're going to need, some of the complete lines things. Um, the only other thing we have to do is to make sure the game ends when we create the blocks. And I'll get to that next time.